Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. Next year is going to be the launch of both RTX 40 from NVIDIA and the RX 7000 series from AMD. Both of these new architectures will offer huge performance uplifts, of course, compared to their predecessors. Basically, the flagship products, and we'll discuss performance more in just a moment, is going to be over a 2x increase over their current you know, higher-end SKUs, which I'm sure you'll agree is a very impressive feat. But there are some updated specifications I'd like to discuss first, and we'll begin with AD102. This is the uh, core, of course, which will be in, let's say, the RTX 4080 and RTX 4090 products. According to Grayman on Twitter, it is going to be produced on the 5NM process from uh, TSMC, and it's going to be featuring a 384-bit GDDR6X memory interface. Interestingly enough, it's also going to clock over 2.2 gigahertz. Now, naturally, clock frequency has a ton of benefits. It's not just, you know, them are T-flops, but it also, depending on the architecture, things vary a little, but it also increases things like the speed of caches, and fill rate obviously goes up as well, and a whole bunch of other stuff, stuff being a technical term. So this architecture is looking to be extremely impressive. I've been hearing quite early on, it was like a 2.2 times increase, but it might even be faster than that. And of course, we're comparing this to the RTX 3090. So NVIDIA are definitely going to be coming out swinging. Not only is this going to be traditional rasterization performance, which goes through the roof, but also things like improvements in ray tracing. And honestly, we're still quite early in the ray tracing era, and ray tracing can do a whole bunch of other stuff other than reflect reflective puddles and I feel that we're still you know developers are getting a handle on this and I was recently discussing this more with Neil Trevitt from the Kronos group I'll link that interview in the video description plug 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 it's actually a really good interview if you're really interested in like game development and kind of the future of technology we discussed quite a lot of interesting topics in it including mesh shading and well ray tracing and a whole bunch of other things but yeah Ray tracing at the moment is in, still in its infancy, so it's going to be very interesting to see how the direction that uh, NVIDIA continues to push this. So with AMD nipping at NVIDIA's heels, one of the key areas that AMD can improve performance is in ray tracing. More recently, I learned that RDNA 3's ray tracing performance is, I was having it described to me anyway, as Ampere plus one. Now this probably, at least to me, sounds more like it's going to be Lovelace levels of performance, although I'm hearing slightly conflicting things. One of my sources has told me that probably NVIDIA are gonna have a slight edge in ray tracing performance. However, it's possible that AMD might help to kind of alleviate that advantage simply because at least from what the rumors are at the moment, their architecture for the flagship product is just gonna be faster in general. So obviously if the product is faster in general and you're a little bit slower in ray tracing, in theory, you might have close to parity, but again, we'll see how that plays out. But uh, anyway, getting back to the specification, Grayman has said that Narve 31 is gonna be built on the 5NM process and 6NM process. This is something that we've discussed a couple of times already on the channel. If you're unfamiliar, there are basically chiplets in Narve 31 as well as 32. So the 5NM process here is going to be referring to the GCDs, which basically are like the compute units, although now AMD have basically gotten rid of compute units and they're gonna be uh, work group processes instead. So it's a very different design. And then uh, the 6NM process is basically going to be the, um, what looks like anyway, the Infinity Cache. So this is quite a smart move from AMD, basically just prioritizing the uh, process based upon the needs of the package itself. And I think that it's going to be a very interesting design. I can't wait to actually see, you know, a block diagram of this thing, you know, an official one from AMD, just to see how they've kind of kind of nipped and tucked because I don't think it's as simple as just saying there's eh, a couple of GCDs and like a you know a die for memory I think it's a lot more complicated than that oh and to be clear memory here is not like an IO die and infinity cache I was basically told that the uh, memory controllers still seem to be part of the GCD and basically the MCD is essentially the infinity cache now, this is going to be wrapped up with a 256-bit GDDR6 memory bus. <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment, because that I find particularly interesting. Narve 32, basically the same thing, albeit 
with a trimmed down uh, memory bus so it's only 192 bit wide and then finally Narve 33 is just produced on the 6LM process and that's quite important again we've discussed this a few times previously so basically Narve 33 seemingly is produced just completely on the 6NM process so it's not using 5NM at all and there is no separate uh, MCD slash GCD it's all basically a single die or I guess you would say monolithic. Now this is actually being produced using just 128-bit bus and that I find really interesting and I, you know there are a lot of things here for you to really kind of dig your teeth into if you so wish but I also want to mention just for a moment longer regarding the specifications and performance of Narve 33. Now it originally had been of course said that Narve 33 is going to essentially be much faster than the 69, nice, 100 XT, but this possibly is no longer going to be the case. I'm hearing now from a couple of different people um, that yeah, basically the performance targets are not that impressive for Narve 33. Now to be clear, this does not mean that they suck, as in the architecture itself or anything like that, it simply means that the 6900 XT, I've been hearing and I've reported a couple of times that the performance leap from the 6900 XT to whatever the 3300 is, that's for the sake of this video, call it the 7600 XT, although that's not official, so just an example. I've been hearing that that was like 40-50% and obviously Narve um, 33, it is quite a different architecture, however, We'd also been hearing that there were some architectural differences between 33 and 31, for example, outside of the fact that it was, of course, a monolithic die. So I'm hearing now that the performance leap between the 6900 XT and 33 is not that big. I don't know exactly what the performance figures are. I'm hearing varying from like 10%, 20%, possibly even close to parity. But Either way, when you think about it logically, it does make some level of sense. Now, I don't know whether AMD decided to nerf the performance or whether the performance was just incorrect to begin with. I've spoken to a couple of people though, and they've told me that this does not seem to impact the performance of Narve 31 and 32, which I'm still hearing is between 2.5 to 2.8 times faster. So in a roundabout, very rough way of you know, describing that, you could essentially say that if you're getting, let's say, 100 frames a second from the 6900 XT, you would be getting like 250, maybe even 300 frames a second on the, well, let's just call it the 7900 XT. Although, of course, there are a ton of other variables to take into consideration, like how well the game engine scales, what kind of game engine it is at all, whether you're CPU bound, and so on and so on. But yeah, I'm just trying to give you guys some kind of visualization there. So it's going to be very interesting to see how AMD kind of pairs all of that together, given we're also hearing an awful lot about a refresh of RDNA 2, which apparently could be like Narve 34 and lower. Yeah, um, <laughs> the GPU market is going to be really weird, I think, over the next several months uh, as we get into the next year. And as, of course, we're just readying to hear about all of the rumors from the next generation and I think that AMD's product lineup is going to be really aggressive. I've said before that I feel that Intel with DG2, aka Alchemist, as it's now officially known, is probably going to have a relatively short shelf life. I don't know whether it's going to coexist with faster cards or whether Intel are just going to do like a complete replacement, but it's going to be very interesting to see how Intel does compete in the longer term because Intel obviously are going to launch their products early next year. But then when you think about it, you know, Alchemist is just going to be trounced by RTX 40 and RDNA 3. However, it is going to be quite a number of months later. I'm hearing around Q3. In fact, another source of mine has told me that this does make sense from what the timings they've been hearing from AIBs. But it is worth noting, of course, that timings and products can slip in schedule. Although I feel that AMD and NVIDIA will probably want to launch roughly about the same time. Obviously, all of the hardware shortages have just... Well, they've not been ideal, but I do think that, you know, it will be a little bit better by that point of the year, just naturally speaking. I do feel, though, that, of course, we will just have a deluge of people who just try to jump on. Because, you know, if you haven't managed to pick up an RTX, let's say an RTX 3080, and it gets to, like, 
uh, let's say March or April, and you're like, eh, okay, I'm now starting to see leaked benchmarks or whatever the RTX 4080. Screw it, I'm out. I'm just going to keep my GTX 1080 Ti or my Vega 64 or whatever card you've got and just kind of hold out for the generation. And honestly, at that point, I couldn't blame you. And this might actually be a really good thing for Intel as well to pick up some sales. I don't know. Uh, but I think that's just about it for this particular video. Um, yeah, I've been away on holiday for about a week. It was actually a really good vacation. I didn't honestly do, well, actually anything. Um, pretty much just sat on a beach. And to be honest, it was really good. I got a lot of messages, you know, asking if everything was good. And yeah, I am. Um, there was nothing bad, you know, went on or anything like that. I just kind of needed to get away because, well, we know about the things that have been happening in the world. I didn't go abroad or anything like that, unfortunately. Um, hopefully next year I can visit the States again because I've got a lot of friends there and, you know, it's really cool to kind of visit. But unfortunately, this was definitely more of a staycation. Uh, but yeah, with all that said, thank you very much for checking out the videos and, uh, I'll see, wow, I just managed to hit a light. So that was a fail at the end of the video, but let's just leave that in. With that said, thanks very much for watching. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.